Hi, Terry Shanefeld here for UAB School of Medicine. Whenever you see a randomized controlled trial, especially a superiority study, intention to treat analysis should be used. In this video, I'm going to discuss what intention to treat analysis is and demonstrate why it's so important. So what is intention to treat analysis? Well, the intention to treat principle is that once you're randomized, you're always analyzed in the group to which you are randomized. So once randomized, always analyzed. It doesn't matter if you're lost to follow up, if you stop treatment, if you die before getting treatment, if you got the wrong treatment, or if you went through the whole study and completed treatment. It ignores everything that happened after randomization. So once you're randomized, you're always analyzed. So let's say a patient's randomized to the arm of a study that they get the new drug. But they never actually get the drug because they're killed walking across the street from the study center to the study pharmacy. That death will count against the drug arm. You might ask yourself, how is that fair? How can you count that death against a drug which the patient never got? Why not count their death to the control group? Because the control group is the arm of the study which wasn't going to get the drug. That seems more fair, doesn't it? Well, let's see why we can't do that. Here's a study of patients with cerebrovascular disease. And the question was, does surgery and aspirin prevent more strokes than aspirin alone? So this is a randomized trial, and 100 patients were randomized to the surgery and aspirin arm, and 100 patients to the aspirin alone arm. And let's say it takes about one month for patients to have everything done, preoperative evaluation, etc., and get ready for surgery. It takes one month. And that one month before surgery, 10 patients had a stroke in the surgery arm. And then the full study lasts one year, and at the end of that year, 10 more patients in the surgery arm had a stroke, and 20 total patients in the aspirin arm had a stroke. So let's just ignore these 10 patients here who had a stroke before surgery, because how could you count those strokes against surgery when the surgery hadn't even happened yet? So let's just throw them out. So now instead of... 100 patients in this arm will just have 90. And now, if we look at the outcomes, we'll have had 10 strokes out of 90 patients for an 11% event rate. So 11% of patients in the surgery arm had a stroke. Well, in the aspirin arm, 20 total strokes occurred. So 20 out of 100 patients, or 20%, had strokes. So it really looks like surgery did a good thing. It reduced the stroke rate by 45%. There are 45% less strokes in the surgery arm compared to the aspirin arm. And this is called a per-protocol analysis, meaning you only count events in people who actually get the intervention or the drug or whatever. You ignore the people who didn't get it. That's a per-protocol analysis. Well, let's see what happens if we do an intention to treat analysis. So if we do an intention to treat analysis, again, once you're randomized, Everything that happened to you happens to you is analyzed in that group. We had 20 total strokes in the surgery arm and 20 total strokes in the aspirin arm. The event rates were absolutely the same. There was no difference, obviously, in event rates between the two arms. So one of the things you can see is that it, intention to treat analysis is something we call conservative. It makes the two groups look more similar, whereas per protocol analysis makes things look more different. Which one is right? Well, in a superiority trial, for sure, intention to treat analysis is the best and primary analysis that we should do. And there's a reason for that. The real reason for intention to treat analysis is that it preserves randomization. There was a reason we randomized. We randomized to equalize prognostic factors. If I start pulling people out of one of the groups or the other, I'll wind up with groups that have imbalanced prognostic factors. And I'll have undone the whole reason and the whole benefit of randomization, of trying to make those two groups as similar as possible. So the whole point of intention to treat analysis is just to preserve randomization, to keep those groups as equal as possible, to see what effect the intervention has on the outcome. Hope this video helps you understand why we need intention to treat analysis in randomized control trials. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the contact me section of my blog. Have a great day.